Oh, the irony. That's what Elon Musk had to say about Twitter suing him. Musk posted the short phrase on Twitter just minutes after the news started circulating online. NDD's Jeremy Sandberg reports. Oh, the irony, LOL, appears to reference Twitter's reported reluctance about Musk acquiring the company back in April when negotiations began. Although the tweet wasn't specific about what Musk found ironic, his tweet came shortly after news of Twitter's lawsuit broke. Twitter says Musk violated the terms of the $44 billion deal. According to a court filing, Twitter wants a Delaware court to order Musk to complete the merger at the agreed $45.20 per share price. They are accusing him of trashing the company, disrupting its operations, and destroying stockholder value before walking away. Musk says he is terminating the deal because Twitter violated their agreement by failing to provide information about fake or spam accounts on the platform, which Twitter claims make up less than 5% of the user base. Musk thinks that number is much higher. He says he wants out because inaccurate representations and lack of information around spam accounts amount to a material adverse event, a change in circumstances that significantly reduces the value of a company. He also feels at least five senior executives leaving the company after negotiations started equates to Twitter failing to conduct business in the ordinary course, as the company was obligated to do. One executive says his reason for leaving Twitter was not because of Elon or uncertainty inside the company. Another claimed he was asked to leave by Twitter's CEO. Twitter says they reworded the language of the contract to accommodate the executives leaving that would have otherwise violated the ordinary course requirement. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Governor Gavin Newsom headed to Washington, D.C. on Wednesday to accept an education award, but critics have pointed out that the state is rated among the worst in the nation. Governor Newsom is at the nation's capital to receive the 2022 Frank Newman Award for State Innovation from the Education Commission of the States. According to the award, California is recognized for its coordinated approach to educating all students from preschool to post-secondary with explicit attention toward whole child supports and services, as well as its historic financial investments to ensure educational equity. So here at the White House just had a meeting with the First Lady, Jill Biden, talking all things education, what's happening uh, across this country that's right and what's going on uh, in many of these red states. And we'll be highlighting those today when we get this Innovation Award in education. Some parent-led organizations criticized Newsom, saying the state was already at the bottom of literacy rankings and that the state closed schools for 18 months during the pandemic lockdowns. Congressional candidate Kevin Kiley calls it a slap in the face to the countless underprivileged kids harmed by his corrupt policies. The State Board of Education has been trying to implement critical race theory in classes. Local communities are trying to fight it. The board has also proposed a new math framework to keep students learning at the same level. But opponents say it would discourage students of minorities and those who want to advance ahead. California has the lowest literacy rate in the country, followed by New York, Florida, Texas, and New Jersey. Analysis found that math scores of average eighth graders were comparable to those of fifth graders. The state also dropped the SAT and ACT scores for college admission last year. The tale of the dueling governors continues. Last month, Governor Gavin Newsom decided to take a jab at Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, by airing a 30-second ad in his state, urging residents to move to California. DeSantis made public remarks in a recent press conference in response to the ad. In a press conference last week, Governor Ron DeSantis fired back at Newsom, stating that his terrible governance was why his state saw a major decline in population. But when families are uprooting from the Pacific coast to go almost 3,000 miles in search of a better life, that's telling you something. Yes, we DeSantis's comments come in response to an ad Newsom ran calling on Floridians to move to the Golden State. He aired a 30-second ad on July 3rd calling on people to join him in what he called the fight against freedom. The facts speak for themselves. People vote with their feet. It's almost hard to drive people out of a place like California, given all their natural advantages, and yet they're finding a way to do it. DeSantis argued that Californians are fleeing the state because of its weak leadership, increased violence, lack of prosecution for violent offenders, inadequate treatment of its law enforcement, and poor education that neglects the parents' right to choose for their own children. Newsom's ad claimed that the freedom of Florida residents is under attack because of Republican leaders like Governor Ron DeSantis. He says that Republicans are banning books, 
restricting speech, making it harder to vote, and criminalizing women and doctors. In 2021, reports indicated that over 300,000 residents of California had left the state to move to red states like Florida or Texas due to the economic stability, tax policies, and welcoming business regulations. A Bay Area tech company CEO was recently arrested in New York at an airport charged with the murder of his roommate's girlfriend 30 years ago. NTD's David Lamb spoke to the county official about the case. In September 1992, 25-year-old Lori Hout's life was tragically cut short when she was murdered in Mountain View after leaving work for the day. John Kevin Woodward, now 58 years old, was suspected of strangling her with a rope inside her car. But forensic technology at the time couldn't tie Woodward to the murder. He is the CEO of ReadyTech, an online training company. When he was brought to trial twice in 1995 and 1996, uh, and unfortunately the jury wasn't able to reach a verdict in either of those cases. Rob Baker, county deputy district attorney, said in 2020, however, they uncovered new DNA evidence and then filed a case in 2022 for the third trial, but there was one major obstacle. Uh, but he was living in the Netherlands at the time, so we also knew that he typically came to the United States at least once a year usually in the summer, sometimes in the winter. So the investigators waited. The Home Office of Homeland Security emailed us last Wednesday and said, uh, guess what, Mr. Mr. Woodward's landing at JFK on Saturday, July 9th. That's when law enforcement flew to New York and assisted with the arrest when the suspect got off the plane. The, the motive uh, in the previous trial was that Mr. Woodward was uh, jealous of, of Lori Houts. And in the first trial, there was testimony presented that uh, he was in love with um, that he was in love with his roommate, um, Mr. Fulmer. Houts was known to be a kind, loyal, and fun person. Her family released the following statement: Lori Ann Houts was a beloved family member and friend to many. Although she was only five feet tall, she had a huge heart, and her humor and spunk were endearing to all. The way Lori lived and treated people was a stunning example of what was right in the world. One of the guiding principles of the cold case unit for the district attorney's office is we never forget. We never forget the victims. We never forget the families and friends of those victims. And our goal is to seek justice no matter how long it takes, 20 years, 30 years, or 50 years. Deputy District Attorney Baker said this was a multi-agency effort. They even communicated with Netherlands law enforcement in order to secure the computers of Woodward. Now, Woodward is currently in New York, but they expect to bring him back to California for court as early as next Wednesday. David Lamb, Entity News, California. The U.S. Navy released the identity of the sailor who was found dead over the weekend while aboard a ship docked in San Diego. The cause of death is still unknown, but so far officials have ruled out foul play or suicide. NDD's Jason Blair has more. A sailor that died while aboard the USS Carl Vinson over the weekend has been identified. Information Systems Technician 2nd Class Darren Collins was found unresponsive early Sunday morning. Collins joined the Navy in 2019 and had been assigned to the Vinson since 2020. He is originally from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. USS Carl Vinson Commanding Officer Captain Scott Miller said in a Navy press release, My deepest condolences go out to the Collins family in this time of tragic loss. As shipmates, we grieve the untimely passing of a talented young man. The cause and circumstances of Collins' death are still being investigated, but the Navy says there are no indications of suicide or foul play. The vessel has been docked at the Naval Air Station North Island in San Diego since February after returning from an eighth-month deployment. Jason Blair, NTD News, California. Yosemite Park officials have concluded that the Washburn Fire burning in Yosemite National Park was caused by human activity. The fire still threatens groves of massive sequoias in the park. According to park officials, human activities caused the Washburn Fire at Yosemite National Park. The park superintendent, Cicely Muldoon, said, As you all know, there was no lightning on that day, so it's a human start fire and it's under investigation. 
Muldoon also said that the park has been working on a project to reduce fire hazards that may affect local communities. Visitors first reported the fire on Thursday near the Washburn Trail in the Mariposa Grove area of Yosemite National Park. It threatens more than 500 sequoias in the park, including the widely famous grizzly giant. Officials warn residents from the nearby community of Wawona to evacuate. The park closed several campgrounds. As other parts of Yosemite remain open, the park is requiring all visitors to have a reservation to enter the park. A state bill would require social media platforms to disclose how they monitor their users' activities and content. The bill is making its way through the legislative committees. Assembly Bill 587, dubbed the Social Media Transparency and Accountability Act of 2021, would require social media companies earning over $100 million a year to publicly disclose their terms of service. It passed through the Senate Judiciary Committee at the end of June. Bill author Assemblyman Jesse Gabriel said in a March 2021 press release it's long past time for these companies to provide real transparency into their content moderation practices. Specifically, these companies would need to share how they define and moderate hate speech or racism, disinformation or misinformation, extremism or radicalization, harassment, and foreign political interference. Opposition comes from several lobbying groups representing consumer technology companies. These include the Internet Coalition, a group representing technology tycoons like Meta, Amazon, and Google. The bill previously passed through the Assembly last year in a 64 to 1 vote. It is now re-referred to the Senate Appropriations Committee to be heard on August 1st. If the bill passes the Appropriations Committee, it will be heard again in the Senate. A viral video shows what appears to be nature reclaiming its territory from humans, but one expert says it's normal behavior. A TikTok video shows people fleeing from sea lions at La Jolla Underwater Park Ecological Reserve in San Diego on Friday. Dozens of beachgoers are seen running and jumping out of the way of two sea lions charging through the shore. The video has nearly 10 million views and sparked conversations about whether the animals were going after people and reclaiming the picturesque cove. But sea lion expert Eric Ochgen of SeaWorld said, This is normal sea lion behavior for this time of year, when males are sparring over females as breeding season gets underway. Still, he doesn't recommend standing and watching if a sea lion is heading in your direction.